Welcome to the Emotional Horsemanship Podcast. I am your host, Lockie Phillips, and I help deeply caring equestrians create emotionally balanced horses with science, empathy, and feel. This podcast is a safe place for anyone who desires a better future for horses and for the equestrian lifestyle. I hope that you will enjoy these solo and collaborative episodes where we enjoy a deep insight into our horses' worlds and ways in which we can make that better for them. If you love horses and are willing to do right by them, you're going to love this podcast. And I thank you for being here. Welcome to this week's episode. This is an emergency episode. I'm calling a meeting. I'm calling a meeting of anyone who listens, anyone who is interested and follows my work. I'm calling a community meeting, a family meeting. We need to talk about this. The international darling of competitive dressage, Charlotte Dujardin, is embroiled in a egregious fall from grace after a horrific video has surfaced of her engaging in horse abuse. The FEI has suspended her from their association and from the Olympics, and the investigation is ongoing. The internet has blown up this morning and so did my social media page after I addressed it directly. And so therefore, I have deemed it necessary to create a pause on my schedule here. I have 15 beautiful guests who are ready to enthrall you with their point of views, but we have to talk about this as a family. Not only do we have to talk about Charlotte, but we have to talk about how we are responding to it. This is a critical moment. If you care about horses, horse welfare and ethics in training. This is a critical moment and what we do now is very, very important because this episode feels like cancelling cancel culture. The whole world's gone mad. I think the whole world has been mad for a while. We're just now starting to really wake up to it. So, I had other plans for this week's podcast. However, my pre recorded guests are going to need to wait because we have to talk about this. And my opinion on this is complex, nuanced, has many layers to it, and therefore easily misunderstood, potentially controversial. I wrote a Facebook post this morning about this issue. And as I'm sitting here um, in my office writing it, I went on to answer some emails and then came back and realized the post was going viral. It was starting to get picked up. In 20 minutes, I had 40 something shares, which is a lot for me. And so I watched my comment section begin and my personal messages begin to fill with both gratitude and agreement and hostility. And so immediately I closed down the comment section only to pages that I follow. Facebook offers this level of control to creators that you can choose who comments on the post. The post can be commented on by anyone in the world public People have followed you for a minimum of 24 hours. Pages that you follow or only pages that you tag. I could go to, you know, DEFCON 3 and go to one other level of of security here and go to pages that I tagged, but I've tagged nobody else in it. So I've made it as secure as possible because last time I posted something which was nuanced, complex, easily misunderstood and potentially controversial, I got death threats. And so I also travel in countries with which have a high degree of gun violence issues um, for business and stand in front of crowds of people I don't know. And so when I'm getting death threats and then I'm working in this manner, I take death threats very, very seriously. Not to be dramatic about it, but I take death threats very, very seriously. And so I've shut down the comment section on this post and even commented on the post to explain people why I've shut it down. I'm not trying to censor anybody. I'm trying to protect myself. And I'm 
making a stance against violence, period. Allow me to say this. This video of Charlotte is egregious. It's horrific. It's abuse. It makes me sick to my stomach, and it's also unsurprising. This is the kind of training that Helga Strand, Caesar Para this year have been eviscerated for. And now the, you know, British darling of dressage, one of the best writers in the world, best writers in the world, so to speak, has now been illuminated. Everything that is done in the dark will come to the light. And here we are in the light. What we do now as a community is really important because we are now faced with a choice. We are faced with some facts, with the truth, and the truth can set us free. If we don't learn from our history, we are bound to repeat it. Right now, we have a choice. What I'm going to do before I go any further is actually read to you what I wrote this morning. I'm just going to read it verbatim. So this is what I wrote. When Charlotte was in the Olymp- when Charlotte was in the London 2012 Olympics with Fallegro, she got my attention because Fallegro was the first competitive dressage horse I personally saw in recent memory, in recent records, whom competed and won without an abundance of overtly obvious calming signals and signs of stress. Fallegro did show stress, lots and lots of it but in an environment where to his left and to his right, horses showed stress times 100,000 and he showed stress times 100, he appeared relaxed by comparison. Not relaxed according to what I prefer and try to practice, but putting myself in the shoes of another, I saw an exception in Charlotte then. I do not see an exception in her now. So she got my attention. In subsequent years, when Fallegro, his stable name, I believe, is Blueberry, retired, and I saw her riding of other horses. It became clear to me that Fallegro might have been an exceptional animal and an anomaly. And then digging a little deeper into personal research, I tried to find quotes from Charlotte herself talking about her champion horse. A person always tells you who they are if we believe them. I heard a rumor that Charlotte described Fallegro as hard-mouthed, I'm not sure if that is true, because much of their press is glossy and idolized, like this article still on the FEI website attributing Charlotte and Vallegro to inspiring a whole new generation of dressage writers. And then I link the article. So if a gold medalist is describing her horse as hard-mouthed, what does this mean for the training process that the horse went through when nobody was watching? I guessed I wildly speculated for myself that Vallegro might be a horse who tolerated more pressure than perhaps other horses would. Perhaps a horse who was predisposed to working under an enormous amount of compression without feeling emotionally off kilter about it, and was therefore able to demonstrate high-level competitive riding with Charlotte without an abundance of signs of stress. Not no stress at all, just drastically less than is typically seen in those contexts and then actually win. Velego looked sort of happy with her by comparison to the horses around them. But in subsequent years, watching Charlotte ride Pumpkin and others, I personally did not like what I saw. I saw too much of the modern continental Euro dressage culture in the horse's body. I felt quietly that she needed to listen more to Carl Hester and less to the continental hypermobile style that is so rewarded now across the board. So. In recent years, I personally waned my interest in Charlotte after initially feeling pleasantly surprised at how much I found an affiliate image in her public body of work that I felt that I could maybe, just maybe enjoy watching and supporting. Charlotte is now currently undergoing the effects of cancel culture. Cancel culture is something I would like to cancel. Let us not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Here is a competitor who demonstrated at the Olympics that once in a blue moon, one horse in a million could compete and win with a drastically minimized output of overt signs of stress. Charlotte showed that to us. Not no stress at all, just drastically minimized by comparison. 
She also popularized and bought into fashion an era of helmets in competitive riding. Before that, it was all tuxedos and top hats. And now helmets are popular and normalized at upper levels. She was the first to really popularize that. She, together with Carl, also used her enormous platform to advocate for ample turnout of their horses. They even hack their top horses on country roads at a time when some competitive horses never saw the light of day or had a chance to roll in a field or play with their buddies. This person was returning from world championships and instead of posting a photo of her ribbons and trophies, she would post a video of turning the champion horse out in a field with their buddies. And then we see a video of her abusing a horse with a whip. In my opinion, the video is egregious. Her actions in the video are horrific. They appear well-practiced. They appear to be perfunctory, like she had done them before. There is no excuse for what she did. It is bona fide abuse. But there are explanations why. And this is where my opinion is nuanced and complex. Stay with me. Understanding why is crucial for us right now if we are to avoid the pitfalls before us. The pitfall of making camps on the left and the right while we hurl abuse at each other. Let us have enough self-restraint to pump the brakes on our outrage and understand why. We must if we are to use this moment as a crucial turning point in the development of horse welfare. I have made mistakes with horses, so have you. Yes, you. I have done things with horses out of frustration. So have you. Nobody is immune to that. All of us have sinned. But I have never whipped a horse like shown in the surfaced video. I have never done that. To the laughter of those filming, it's sickening. And the inaction of the rider and the entitlement of Charlotte. And yet, I do not agree that now is the time to cancel Charlotte. It would not occur to me to blame the victim. The timing is perhaps suspect to speculation, but perhaps the timing has nothing to do with it. I know what it is like to wait years, 10 years in fact, to blow the whistle on my abusers. I have abusers who I am still waiting for the right time to blow the whistle on them. Now is not the time. I have waited for a time when the groundswell of support was such that they could blow the whistle and not stand alone. Perhaps Charlotte's whistleblower waited until they had enough support around them so they could be brave. I do not know. But we must not make this about the whistleblower. That is the lowest hanging fruit here today. Let us make this about why the top competitor in our industry so completely failed. Why we cannot sanction almost any competitive writing in 2024 through an ethics lens. And why we need to stop cancelling people's mistakes, and instead learn from them so that we never, ever repeat them. Two things can be true at the same time. Someone can be abusing horses and in the same breath make great choices for them. It is the human problem. We have a heavy, clever, abstract brain that, in my opinion, needs another 50 million years of evolution to refine this new biocomputer and debug some of its glitches. The human brain's most common glitch, in my opinion, is the glitch of incongruence. Say one thing, do one thing, next minute contradicted entirely. It is almost like somebody left the paddock gate open in the human psyche and all the horses got out, running chaos across the road. It is the reason why we so wholly engage in acts of abuse, torture, murder, and systematic annihilation of others. Just like cancel culture is the annihilation of others, we abhor the same way abusive horse training is the annihilation of the horse's well-being in real time. Be careful, outraged or not we may be, to carefully track the threads of aggression and hostility as they move through our bodies lest we make hypocrites of ourselves. To use hostility and aggression and lack of listening to others and lack of compassion to others to cancel an other is the same human trait of a lack of listening, hostility, aggression and lack of compassion shown to the horse in the Charlotte scandal. To weaponize the same weapons of the person we cancel is by definition incongruent. The best way to no longer sanction the sort of abuse Charlotte engaged in is to eliminate those same urgings from ourselves wherever they show up. Yes, even when directed at Charlotte. 
The human brain's most common glitch, in my opinion, is the glitch of incongruence. Our brains have not fully reconnected recent complex brain developments into our body, our ancient wisdoms, our empathy, and our kindness. I mean, we can, but it takes a Herculean effort to do so. In order to live a congruent life, one must be actively antisocial to the mainstream because mainstream living requires incongruence to fit in, survive, and be successful. Charlotte, like tens of thousands of top equine professionals, is part of this problem, stuck in a system where she must force performance, force compliance by any egregious means necessary so that she can maintain her safety, her success, her image, and her acceptance. Imagine being an Olympic gold medalist, training someone else's lesser, they categorize, lesser horse because the horse isn't a gold medalist and the horse is not doing it the way your Vallegro did it for you. Imagine doing that in front of an audience. People say, I saw Charlotte at a clinic and actually she couldn't get the results. It must be Vallegro, not her. Such nasty phrases are commonplace and directed every day to all trainers everywhere. Trainers are under enormous pressures to prove not only competency, but competency right now and the means necessary are not important. This is a dynamic I work hard every day to counter. It is so hard to do. If we cancel Charlotte now, we risk the following. One, not learning from this. Why did the top competitor in that industry still fail at horse at horse? Ethics 101. If she is failing, we all are, in my opinion. If we take a community view of things, we all are. Number two, we risk covering up the positive impact she did make towards helmet culture, turnout culture, and showcasing 12 years ago a one in a million semi relaxed horse. Even if he was one in a million, she still showcased a semi relaxed horse by comparison in a competitive environment. We lose, number three, we lose an opportunity to understand the popular culture of training and how we need to double our efforts to reform it. We actually need new parameters of competency, new parameters of success. We don't need to cancel Charlotte. Charlotte will get what is coming for her. Cancel culture, in my opinion, is the epitome of a diversion tactic. It is also hostile and aggressive. An eye for an eye, we are all blind. Someone grappling with their own conscience in what they did or are currently doing to horses can so easily redirect their internal turmoil onto another and heap their own self their own self-loathing onto a scapegoat. They get an adrenal hit out of it. They feel better about themselves. The Germans call it Schadenfreude. Direct translation is crappy friend or happiness at the misfortune of others. It is a toxic trait, in my opinion, to cancel another. We cannot talk a storyline of holding space for misbehaving horses, for troubled horses, if we cannot hold space for misbehaving and troubled people. I see someone like Charlotte whipping a horse the way she did, and I want to throw up. But I also acknowledged how troubled she must be. Troubled and damaged. Damaged before, during, and after the abuse. Not an excuse. I hold no sympathy for her. But damn, how damaged must someone be to do what she did? How damaged must someone be to believe they can cancel another, deny their existence like a death, the same way horses are denied their existence? Be careful, outraged or not, to track aggression patterns through our bodies and stop them in their tracks. I've been saying for months, Shit is going to hit the fan this Olympics. We need to be ready to catch the people who are abandoning ship. The Olympics hasn't even started yet, and here we are. Shit fan ship. So the people who are misunderstanding me are saying that how can he be for the horse and also appear to be sympathetic towards Charlotte? How can he be for the horse and be sympathetic towards Fallegro? Fallegro was stressed at the Olympics. Again, I said multiple times in the post, he was not not stressed. He was just less stressed by comparison to all the horses around him. He was absolutely a stressed animal in those contexts, but just less stressed than the horses around him. It was the first horse I could almost watch 
you know, and so she got my attention because by comparison, I felt like she was the closest reaching professional that might have a Venn diagram overlap with really good ethics. And yet she doesn't. This is actually a huge blow to the ethics movement because if, if Charlotte is doing this, they all are. That's the big issue here. I'm so sad to watch the fall of this person. There's part of me also that goes, she must be having a really bad day. There's part of me that has compassion for her. Forgive me for having compassion for her. Forgive me. It's part of my humanity. I have to have compassion for anyone going through a hard time. She, she abused a horse, same way she would abuse a, a child or another person. And it's probably systemic. That wasn't a moment in time. It wasn't a lapse in judgment. It's most likely systemic, I speculate. But I have compassion for everyone. I stand against violence, period. And I think cancel culture is violent. I would like to cancel cancel culture. I think it's violent. It's violent to take a stance where you deny someone their existence and pretend they don't exist. It is so abusive to say you don't exist now. I've decided you don't exist. That is everything that's wrong with this world because then we're not learning from their mistakes. And we're also putting ourselves into a corner where we're now unable to make a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. We have to learn from them. And if we start canceling people who make big mistakes, we're going to continue to make bigger ones. Cancel things, not people. Cancel violence. If we are to cancel anything, cancel violence and hostility. Cancel the inability to listen, including listening to horses, listening to others, listening to nuanced points of view listening to someone who can see both sides. Cancel that. Now is not the time to say, fuck you, Charlotte. Now is not the time. That is hostile. That is aggressive. Be careful with our outrage, our anger. I understand I'm angry too. I've been angry for years. I was angry in Tokyo and no one wanted to listen to me. And now we're all angry. Be careful that your anger doesn't turn into exactly the same thing you're wishing to disidentify with. Just redirect it elsewhere. We see Charlotte whipping a horse, so we emotionally, mentally, socially, culturally whip Charlotte. That's, that's not the solution. That's war. We don't need more war. We need to understand each other. It is time we have to go to another level. Now, my friend Kim Hallen, who was on the podcast last week, she said, I don't think we need human evolution to get better at this. I think we just need to make better choices. Love you, Kim. Mean it. You are already an evolved person. <laughs> I think to see broad spectrum improvements here, we do need an evolution. We do need some more time to improve our brain because the inability to recognize how violent canceling someone is, is part of this issue. To to continuously engage in war is, is the same problem we're seeking to disidentify with that's incongruent. We actually have to face this demon now. We actually, we actually have to look at square in the eye and say, who are you? What are you? Why are you consistent? Why are you in all of us? Why are all human beings not immune to this hostile demon, this monster that's inside of us, this negative force, this negative force comes out of Charlotte Dujardin as she whips this horse for non-compliance on an upper level movement. This same violence comes out of the body of someone wishing, wishing to cancel Charlotte. It's still violence. We cannot use violence to stop violence, in my opinion. In my opinion. And that's a controversial opinion. And so to protect myself, I have to control how I'm being honest. Because if I am to be honest, the, the more growth you get, the more dangerous it is to be honest. Isn't that wild? The whole world's upside down. So what to do now? I encourage all of us to take a deep breath and calm down. I encourage all of us to realize that if you are having an a huge spike of hostility and anger towards Charlotte. Ask yourself why. When was the last time you felt frustrated with a horse or towards somebody else? 
that frustration is the same frustration you're pushing back against in Charlotte. You're pushing back against yourself because subconsciously you see yourself in Charlotte. So track power dynamics, but also track aggression dynamics through your body and stop them. Stop them before they come out of your body and you say, write or do something hostile to anyone. That's what we need to do now. Second step is there are now going to be thousands, maybe tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people for whom 6, 12, 18 months ago would have been part of the competitive writing community, be it weekend competitions at an amateur level or seeking to go all the way. These people now are starting to wake up and they're starting to see, well, if Charlotte's going there, um, Titanic, iceberg ahead, they're looking for a lifeboat. Your hostility stops them from jumping in a lifeboat. What if there's something salvageable here? What if we can salvage people from this community where violence towards horses is so prevalent and violence towards people is so prevalent? What if we can create a compassionate container, a bridge, a lifeboat for them to literally jump ship and actually join us over here where we are drastically, furiously (laughs) reconsidering practices and trying our best to track hostile temperaments and stop them. We are doing our best to reinvent practices. We are doing our best to be ethical. We are doing our best to understand these problems. We need to create a bridge for them. We need to welcome them. And hostility has never been welcome in the history of humankind. And if we don't learn from our history, we are doomed to repeat it. Those are my thoughts for today. My apology for my guest who will have to see us next week. Something to think about, guys. Pump your brakes. Exercise caution. Be aware. No one here is immune. That's all I have to say on that. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.
Let's take a break. People ask me all the time, how do I begin learning about emotional horsemanship, Lockie? Well, I can give a complex and an easy answer to that. The complex answer is that we have many points of entry for all budgets, all learning styles, and many different types of horse people. The only prerequisite is that you care deeply about horses. You could listen here to free conversations with my friends and colleagues, read my posts, watch my YouTube channel, or you could subscribe to my video library and see over 200 videos and two new videos posted every single week. But the easy answer, how do you begin learning about emotional horsemanship? The easy answer is the Emotional Horsemanship Foundation online course. Emotional horsemanship is not like natural horsemanship. That's a common misconception because there are elements in emotional horsemanship which are inspired by all sorts of horse training, including classical dressage, intrinsic, bodywork disciplines, and many different Western riding disciplines. And some elements in emotional horsemanship are purely proprietary to it. I've done a lot of inner work on myself to feel brave enough to actually say that emotional horsemanship is a method and some of the methods in it are proprietary to it, meaning you won't find them elsewhere. This is the most important first step to learning how emotional horsemanship could teach you how to emotionally balance your horsemanship and your horse. And that first, first step is to study the Emotional Horsemanship Foundation online course. This humble little course is under four hours in length and you get lifetime access to it. It is the course that changed the life so far of thousands of horses and I never expected to see more than 15 people there. It's also changed my life too. This year, the entire course is getting an upgrade and you will get access to that new version as well. Click the link in the description of this podcast to sign up for this course or go to emotionalhorsemanship.com and navigate to the Emotional Horsemanship Foundation online course. Now, let's return to this conversation with my guest on the podcast.
You've been listening to the Emotional Horsemanship Podcast. I am your host, Lockie Phillips, and that was my guest, Kim Hallen. Kim Hallen currently has an amazing new offering available for anyone who resonates with her very important work. This offering focuses on boundaries, boundaries for horse owners, for riders, for equestrians, but also equestrian professionals, barn owners, livery managers, horse trainers. Boundaries are so, so important and Kim specializes in them. So if you're interested in learning more about boundaries for Kim, designated especially for the equestrian community, you can check out a link to that course in the bio of this episode. I highly, highly recommend it. Thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you next week. I hope you're enjoying this first season of the Emotional Horsemanship Podcast. Bye.